In the 1950s, they created the food pyramid. The best type of diet you could have is this food pyramid. Number one, it says grains. Now, who's behind the grains? You already know, big corn. And then vegetables is there. You know, you gotta throw that bullshit in. Boom, meat's thrown under the bus. Meat's like fourth or third place. Sugar is on top. Because everyone knows sugar, it's like cocaine, but it's bad. Sat fats, trans fats extreme fats that's just you don't even need to worry about that that's 2020 dairy is doing their own thing third one i think nuts no that's proteins vinaigrette oh six cups of the vinaigrette yes okay thank you food pyramid it doesn't give any regulations on that regulating the food pyramid is they've been drawing legislation on that for years it's like a modern day caste system for uh, animals. The animals at the top of the food pyramid that eat sugar are more intelligent than the animals at the bottom of the food pyramid. You think about it at the end of the day, all these animals are the same. Uh, so if you want to be intellectually consistent, you have to be willing to admit to yourself that I'm willing to eat any kind of animal. Animals we eat are the animals we don't want. Eliminate what needs to be eliminated, i.e. rats, mules, turkey. You want to be top carnivore, you got to eat that dog. Scorpions aren't insects. They're like the upper class of the insect class of the food pyramid. Yes, eliminate all insects is on my mind. Corn is what sustains it. I want to talk about corn. <laughs> if you think something is bad in this world, it goes back to big corn. Big corn is the enemy of the common man. You know, that's only the beginning of our problems. We got big insects. Big insects are terrorizing the civilians, flying around, flying, mind you. Like, we can't do that. They got that on us. I'll tell you what, there ain't gonna be no damn bugs on the moon because the bugs are stuck on Earth. You don't think they're gonna be moon bugs? Buddy, you got another thing coming. These bugs are ready to explore. These bugs have got figured out that they're going into space and their wings reach far enough, they're harnessing the oxygen from the sun. They're harnessing the oxygen from the sun. These bugs are harnessing- Where do animals fall into all this? Of course they're part of the corn. The horses, the giraffes, all the meat we eat, they eat wheat. Guess what? Wheat is corn. It's a cornopoly. It's a corn pocket. Animals that eat corn are gonna grow to the size of the earth and eventually detach into outer space. Corn planet. So there's one thing I learned from the ancient Native Americans. It's that all things in life need to be balanced. Insects, water, corn the three elements of our world. The idea that corn wants to leave Earth, you know, it's not an accident. Fish have found out through computers, that's a first, that the center of the Earth is made of water. They want to get there. Fish apocalypse. The need for life, dare I say it, existence, to go beyond the water, is ludicrous from a philosophical standpoint. It's like a lifestyle. It's like a choice that isn't yours. It's like a cruel joke. <laughs> it's like a cruel joke. It's like life. It's not your choice. We, as humans, are trapped in between the ecosystems of the insects and the corn. It's a pitiful fool's fanciful dream to think that if you're a human that you're in control of this world. I know that in this battle, I need to be with the fish. You have to really question at the morals of the food pyramid because maybe it's not all it's shocked up to me and maybe the food pyramid is a little bit more politics than nutritionism.